Hello there. If you're a fan of detective and horror cases, you're probably familiar with serial killings. However, the story of the serial killer I'm about to tell you today will be like a breath of fresh air, taking you from one surprise to another. This ruthless murderer has taken a total of 14 lives in just three short years, and all of the victims were women. The key point lies in the method by which he sends his victims to heaven, and it's safe to say that it's a level of cruelty never seen before. It all began in September 1998, when a passerby discovered the body of an unidentified woman in a cornfield on the outskirts of Beijing. Terrified, the person quickly reported it to the police. Upon receiving the report, the police promptly arrived at the crime scene. It was a gruesome scene. The victim was scantily clad, and in her handbag there were scattered condoms. The forensic doctor confirmed that the victim was a young woman, probably in her early 20s. The cause of death was strangulation, and the time of death was estimated to be two months prior. Based on her attire and the items she carried, the police speculated that the victim was a sex worker. They then checked all the records of recently missing persons but unfortunately found no suitable matches. Subsequently, the police conducted investigations and surveys at major entertainment venues in the city, but they yielded no results. The case was put on hold. At first, it was thought to be just an ordinary murder case, but little did they know that a year later, a similar incident would occur. In 1999, a sex worker named Wu's from Heilongjiang was strangled to death in her rented house, using the same method as the previous case. However, due to the nature of the profession, which involves interacting with various clients, most of whom keep their true identities secret, the investigation became extremely d difficult. Nevertheless, the police did not give up, even though a year had passed and no significant leads had been found. At that time, another murder occurred. The police discovered the body of another woman on a cornfield. Judging by her clothing and personal belongings, she was likely engaged in the same profession as the two previous victims. However, the method of killing was much more brutal than the previous cases. The perpetrator even used a corn stalk to penetrate the victim's vagina, piercing through her abdomen, causing excruciating pain until her death. This case immediately caught the intense attention of the Beijing police. Forensic investigators also swiftly joined the investigation. Unfortunately, due to the lack of substantial evidence and the absence of any witnesses, despite the considerable manpower and resources invested, the progress of solving the case remained stagnant. What the police did not expect was that only three months later, they would discover another unidentified female body in an abandoned well. This victim was strangled to death and her head was smashed to pieces. Based on her clothing and tattoos, she may have been a colleague of the three previous victims. Four months later, the police found yet another unidentified female body in a garbage dump. To make matters worse, this victim was strangled and then impaled with a steel rod through her vagina and chest, causing excruciating agony before her demise. The severity and brutality of these cases seemed to escalate. Consequently, the police immediately classified this series of crimes as the most serious cases of the year and formed a professional investigation team consisting of forensic experts to assist in the investigation. However, with very few leads, and except for one victim named Wu Zi, the identities of the remaining victims were unknown, making the investigation process extremely slow. After countless days and nights of relentless effort, the heavens finally smiled upon us. The investigation team has finally obtained a valuable lead after numerous inquiries. According to the landfill manager's recollection, on the night before the incident, he saw a white cement truck parked outside the landfill. However, Due to the darkness at that time, he couldn't clearly see the license plate or identify the truck model. Therefore, the team of experts could only search for clues from tire tracks. After analyzing the tire tracks, the investigative team concluded that this white cement truck belonged to a specific imported cement brand, and there were only around two or three hundred trucks of this type in the city of Beijing. This clue helped narrow down the search range significantly, expediting the investigation process. The police checked each truck one by one, but at the same time, a new case occurred. A married couple called the police to report that their younger sister had been killed in a rented room. Immediately after receiving the phone call, the police arrived at the crime scene. They found a nearly skeletal body lying on the bed, with only a few traces of flesh remaining. A broomstick was deeply embedded in the victim's abdomen. According to the preliminary findings of the forensic team, the time of death was approximately one month prior. According to the reporting party, the victim was their younger sister named Juan. Juan had come to this city to work and live with them, her elder sister and brother-in-law. However, later on, Juan felt that working to earn money took too long and brought in too little income, so she decided to enter the profession of a prostitute. The two sisters had a big argument as a result, and Juan even left home, determined to find another place to live on her own, without anyone's supervision. For the next two months, the two of them had no contact with each other. One day, 
A relative from the countryside came to the city for work, so the elder sister wanted to invite Juan to have a meal together. However, for some reason, the elder sister made numerous calls, but Juan never answered. Feeling that something was wrong, the elder sister and her husband went to Juan's rented house. They knocked on the door for a while, but no one answered. Luckily, they had a spare key, so they used it to open the door. They were greeted by a horrendous stench and a terrifying scene of a nearly decomposed body, which left them horrified. They immediately called the police. Subsequently, along with this case, seven similar cases occurred in the city of Beijing. If the criminal was not apprehended quickly, more women could be harmed. Therefore, the police decided to divide the investigation into two teams. One team would investigate Juan's social relationships while the other team would interview Juan's neighbors. The neighbors revealed that about a month ago they did indeed smell a foul odor. However, since the rent for the house was cheap and many people rented it as a warehouse, they thought the smell was not unusual. They had not heard any unusual sounds for the past few months. However, one notable point was that they had seen various men entering and leaving Juan's house. Meanwhile, the team investigating Juan's social relationships had some good news to share. They had received useful information from a person named Fang, who stated that Juan was very cautious and only brought familiar customers to her rented house. In general, according to this person's knowledge, the number of men that Juan had brought to her house did not exceed 15, including a certain company director, a high school teacher, a government official, a workshop owner, and a tanker truck driver. When Fang mentioned the taxi driver, the police couldn't help but pay attention. They immediately accessed Juan's call history and quickly found a new lead. The investigative team discovered that Juan's last received call before her murder came from a landline phone. And more importantly, this phone number was traced back to a concrete mixing station in the city, another clue related to the taxi driver. Based on this, the police speculated that the caller could be the culprit. Accordingly, the police went to the concrete mixing station to investigate immediately that night. The manager of the place mentioned a person named Hua Wenzhu, who occasionally came there to make phone calls, but the strange thing was that he only made calls when there was no one around. And if there were people, he would never touch the phone, as if he was secretly doing something bad. What's even more interesting is that the cement truck he often drove turned out to be a white cement truck, coincidentally matching the suspicious truck at the landfill. Therefore, the police immediately went to Hua Wenzhu's location and arrested him, while conducting a comprehensive search of his house and finding a pile of cosmetics, mobile phones, watches, and women's handbags from a secret place hidden on the ceiling of his house. Additionally, the investigative team also discovered clear bloodstains on those items. With compelling evidence, Hua Wenzhu had no reason to resist and had to admit that he was the perpetrator of all seven cases. What is even more terrifying is that in addition to these seven cases, Hua Wenzhu voluntarily confessed to seven more murders. Based on the suspect's confession, the investigative team quickly found seven more bodies including four bodies dumped into the same well, and all the victims had been stabbed in the abdomen from below with a strange object. Since the first case in 1998, the initial cases occurred once a year, then became every six months, then every few months, and finally, within a short period of three months, Hua Wenzhu continuously killed eight more people. However, as the investigation went deeper, the police began to feel somewhat confused. The investigation showed that Hua Wenzhu had no previous criminal record, he had married a woman from Sichuan four years ago, and they even had a three-year-old son together. So why would a man who had a happy family suddenly turn into such a crazed murderer? According to Hua Wenzhu's confession, the reason he killed those women was entirely out of hatred, because he had been emotionally hurt by prostitutes in the past. In 1994, Hua Wenzhu met and developed a romantic relationship with a girl. When he was in love, he was very generous and didn't hesitate to spend money on the person he loved. He spent 5,000 RMB on that girl, even though his salary at that time was only 200 RMB. However, after dating for a year, Hua Wenzhu painfully discovered that his girlfriend was actually a prostitute. However, she used sweet words to lure him, saying that she would switch to a more decent job and stop doing this kind of work. So they got back together for another six months. During this time, Hua Wenzhu not only introduced his girlfriend to his family, but also started considering and preparing for their wedding. However, at that time, he accidentally saw his girlfriend being involved with an elderly wealthy man from Hong Kong at a high-end hotel. Since the hotel staff didn't allow Hua Wenzhu to enter, he had to sit in the lobby waiting for his girlfriend. When she came down, Hua Wenzhu noticed that she had a Hong Kong watch on her hand, which obviously didn't come from him. However, despite being caught in the act, his girlfriend didn't feel guilty at all and even blamed him instead. Hua Wenzhu was deeply hurt. After this incident, his thoughts and emotions began to twist, and he vowed to take revenge on his girlfriend. 
However, when Hua Wenzhu returned to the rented house to find his girlfriend, she had long disappeared, and even everything in the rented house had been moved. Basically, Hua Wenzhu had no way of finding her in this vast city of Beijing. After that, Hua Wenzhu got married. However, he still harbored hatred towards his ex-girlfriend in his heart and always nurtured the intention of revenge. One day in 1998, Hua Wenzhu felt a bit bored, so he drove out for a walk. As he was driving across a bridge, he suddenly saw a figure that resembled his ex-girlfriend. Hua Wenzhu immediately stopped the car and greeted the person. But when the woman looked up, he realized that he had mistaken her for someone else and apologized, turning around to leave. However, at that moment, the woman actively harassed him. Memories of his ex-girlfriend flooded back into Hua Wenzhu's mind, and anger surged like a raging sea, feeling that both his ex-girlfriend and the woman in front of him were equally despicable. Hua Wenzhu had a thought. If he couldn't find his ex-girlfriend, why not seek revenge on women who resembled her? So after negotiating the price, they moved to a cornfield. Initially, Hua Wenzhu had no intention of killing anyone. He only wanted to punish the woman. But unexpectedly, the woman couldn't keep her mouth shut while being tormented, and her words provoked Hua Wenzhu, eventually unleashing the evil within him. He lunged at the girl and strangled her to death, marking his first offense. After committing his first murder, Hua Wenzhu was particularly panicked. In the following six months, he couldn't sleep peacefully, frequently dreaming of being taken to the courtroom to await execution. However, an entire restless year passed, and no one came to arrest him. It was then that Hua Wenzhu could finally breathe a sigh of relief. In 1999, while he was out, he passed by a rented room where a prostitute resided. Seeing her, he immediately thought of his ex-girlfriend and desired to torment and kill this person. So, he negotiated the price again and entered the room with the girl named Wuz. Once inside, he completely changed his attitude and strangled the girl to death. After the second murder, he still felt uneasy, but as time passed and the police didn't arrive, his courage grew. He went from killing once a year to once every six months. And after each attack, Hua Wenzhu felt a great sense of satisfaction, to the point where he couldn't control himself and became increasingly brutal. He began killing one person per month and eventually reached the level of eight murders in a short span of three months. Hua Wenzhu's methods became increasingly cruel, he used objects like steel to pierce the sensitive areas of the victim's bodies, aiming for the abdomen or chest, gradually causing them to die in agonizing pain. In his eyes, there was no prostitute who was a good person in this world. He believed that by killing them, he was rectifying the heavens. Therefore, despite his numerous acts of cruelty, he never felt remorse. Among the victims, except for a few whom Hua Wenzhu took to the cornfield to torment, most were dealt with inside his car. And when they died, there was no avoiding the fact that there would be some waste disposal. So after each murder, he had to take the time to clean his car and sometimes even spray perfume to mask the smell. Hua Wenzhu believed he had concealed his crimes very well, thinking that no one would discover them. However, fate has a way of catching up with the wicked. Hua Wenzhu, the evil and ruthless demon, received the death penalty for all the crimes he committed, especially the shocking serial murders that shook public opinion. And so, the case of Hua Wenzhu's serial killings came to a close. The psychology behind such murder cases is truly difficult to explain. Each person has a different past, some with a good and beautiful history, while others are not so fortunate. However, no matter what, we must remember that we always have a wide open sky of the future ahead of us. Don't let our hearts overshadow our reason, and let hatred obscure our conscience, only to close that entire sky behind the tomb.